Okay, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Let's get started. Well, let me start off by saying welcome to the course. Um, my name is Bill Newhall, and today what I plan to do is just start introducing the course, talk about how we're gonna be running the course, um, talk about the course format and the assignments and how we're going to uh, be running the course rem remotely. Um, and then also actually just start talking about uh, the material. Um, so Canvas is up, the Canvas course is up. Uh, take a look at that for upcoming assignments and you'll see uh, the quizzes, the homework one, lab zero is posted up there. Those are all coming up soon. And I'll talk about those when I get into the slides in class. And also um, I sent out an invitation an announcement and also take a look at the Canvas page for the Slack page. So I plan to have uh, an active Slack page so that we can talk about homework and labs and, uh, and, and, and basically discussions all on Slack. Uh, for my office hours, I'll be holding office hours right after class, uh, every class. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, hold for two minutes, I'll keep the Zoom session up. Uh, stick around for two minutes, and then I'll start up office hours right after right after class. Um, so I encourage you to ask questions um, via chat or unmute yourself. Um, otherwise, I would ask that you stay muted uh, so that we can keep the background noise down. That tends to work better in these larger classes and meetings all around. But definitely unmute or shoot me a chat if you have a, a question. Um, and also, if I drop off dur uh, during class, uh, probably because of technical issues, stick around for a few minutes and I'll do my best to, to get back. Um, haven't had that happen so far, but just preparing for it. Okay. All right. So again, welcome to the class. I like to start out uh, by telling you who I am, who your instructor is, why, why should I be teaching this class? Um, I have been an electrical engineer in uh, RF electronics, specifically radio frequency electronics, uh, for about 25 years now. I develop uh, radio frequency electronics antennas and uh, electronic systems. And so what am I doing here? I, I really enjoy uh, teaching as a faculty member at CU. I've been teaching at CU for about 15 years now. And uh, before that, I guess I've been teaching for total about 22, 23 years now. Um, uh, at, at a different university also. So I, I really enjoy teaching, bringing what I learn in industry into class. For this class, so I work with mechanical engineers every day. Um, I, I, I work in industry, industry most of the time and I, I teach electronics classes. Um, and this class is primarily geared for mechanical engineers. And uh, just today, I was working with uh, mechanical engineers on thermal issues because of heat being generated by FPGAs and different electronics and how to get the heat out of the, the board and get it to some, some liquid cooling. So um, uh, there's lots of issues, uh, electromagnetic interference that has to be shielded. So I, I work with uh, uh, mechanical engineers, materials and process engineers, um, thermal engineers. And so, you know, Great, so what? I, I hope to bring that experience into class and to use that to help choose the topics that I think would be very useful for you. So that's my intent on this class is to leverage my engineering experience to help you learn circuits and electronics fundamentals. And also to bring some practical examples uh, that are relevant to mechanical engineers uh, and also non-EEs. We, I'm sure we have some non-mechanical engineers, non-EEs in this class. And I, I think this class is very appropriate for, uh, for non-EEs, uh, no matter what the discipline. I'm really enthusiastic. I'm excited about teaching using the, uh, I'll say modern technology. So we were sort of forced into this remote class mode. Uh, we were forced into it uh, in the spring. I switched over immediately. I had been doing videos for my class, so I was kind of set up for it. And then I taught this class uh, exclusively remotely during the summer. So I think it worked out pretty well. And actually it lets me share slides and switch back and forth between slides and whiteboard pretty quickly and do some demos and show you some hardware. So it's actually 
um, I found uh, is sort of a plus in teaching this class. I get to um, do more things remotely than I actually could do in class. Okay, so let's let's talk about the the course goals. What I what I hope to bring to you, what I hope you learn, and what huh, the university requires you learn. Um, the goal is to develop your abilities in analysis and design and test, and I'll say building, troubleshooting, um, analog and digital circuits and electronics. So I'm sure you've all started off with some electronics background, right? Uh, I, I call this a survey. You don't have to answer just in your head. Think about this, answer it to yourself. But so um, I'm sure you all have experience with electrical concepts, right? So for uh, from physics class, you talked about charge and probably Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law. So you probably have some experience there um, working with those laws. So that's kind of the fundamental um, fundamental concepts of circuit analysis. And then you probably went into, got into some material on resistors, capacitors, inductors, and how those work. Um, and, and so, um, let's see. So, so yeah, so, so that's kind of what cover your, that is covered in your physics class. We start entering, I would say, new material. Um, when we get into Thevenin equivalent circuits and impedance and phasers. So I would claim that you've already experienced this and maybe maybe didn't know it, maybe you did. But um, so for example, if you've looked at the back of your, uh, your ampl audio amplifier on maybe your radio, your stereo, uh, and it said 16 ohms or eight ohms or four ohms next to the, the speaker jack, uh, you have encountered Thevenin equivalent circuits. And we'll talk about that in class. Um, and then we'll get into some more electronics topics like diodes and semiconductors and transistors and op amps. You probably, you might have had some experience already with microprocessors. If you've used an Arduino, you've used a microprocessor and you've done some programming and you've gotten into um, digital topics and we'll get more into that. We'll talk about how microprocessors work and some good ways to use those. But overall, really the, okay, so the, the, the overall goal of covering these is to increase your understanding of analysis and design, and test, troubleshooting of circuits and electronics. Okay. So um, just to spell my name out in my email, again, I'm Bill Newhall. Um, my office hours, they're on the webpage, generally after class, every class, I'll stick around. Uh, we have four teaching assist assistants who will uh, teach the lab, so one each section. So their their names are here. Takshan has taught this class before. Tejesh, Savith, and, and Pratik have all electronics experience, so they're going to be good resources in this class. Those uh, labs will be taught remotely, and they'll also have office hours to support anything you would like to talk to them about about lecture. The web page is Canvas, as I mentioned. The textbook is Hambly's Electrical Engineering Principles and Applications, a highlight seventh edition. Circuits, circuits hasn't changed much over the last few decades. The material in the first edition probably would do you fine, but um, the seventh edition has homework problems that are referenced. Um, so if you don't have the seventh edition and you have a friend with the seventh edition, you know, um, uh, buy them, buy them some coffee, and uh, and look at the homework problems in there. The international editions, I, at least in the past, the homework problems have not matched uh, the assignments. Uh, so, so definitely the the edition, the cover that you see right there on the screen is the seventh edition. Let's talk a little bit about the course format. We're going to have lectures like this uh, via Zoom. I'll lead those. I will teach theory, teach material, and I'll try to show a lot of uh, problem examples. Um, we'll have, uh, not in lecture, but remotely, quizzes, which will be short questions on really fundamental topics. And then we'll have some homework. I'll talk more about this. They will be practice problems that are actually a little more complex than the quizzes. Um, and you'll have labs where you will apply the material that you learned in lecture, quizzes, and homework. Uh, to design, construct, and test circuits. And then, of course, we're going to have exams, uh, as usual, in a college course. 
and that will test your knowledge, um, motivate you to study, I like to say. Uh, it's really encouragement for that, for lectures, quizzes, homeworks, and labs, what we learn there. I, I created a course roadmap. I like to short, show this roadmap. A, a roadmap shows you where you're going, right? So this is a map, a high level map on one page of where you're going in this course and what I will teach you will learn. Um, we're going to cover what I consider the circuits part of the course, which is basic electrical theory, charge, voltage, current, power. Um, we're going to get into uh, analysis of DC circuits again, which is probably a review for you, but I'll give you some tips that I think aren't taught necessarily in, in physics. Um, we'll get into transient circuits. You probably talked about inductors and capacitors. We'll talk about those more um, and some practical applications of those. And then finally, analysis of AC circuits, which is working with sinusoids. So if you work with audio, uh, if you work with, um, uh, let's see, uh, radio frequencies, um, or if you're just, if you have some kind of sensor that's sensing anything that is a uh, periodic function, um, then the AC part of this course will really help with that. And then we step into what's what I call the electronics part of the course. Um, these are actually two separate courses in electrical engineering. So electronics uh, versus circuits. So in circuits, you learn a lot of theory. It's practical, but it's a lot of theory. And then, then in electronics, you get into some really higher level practical devices like diodes and transistors. So we'll talk about those to build amplifiers and switches that can be controlled by microcontrollers. And we'll talk about um, operational amplifiers. So operational amplifiers are, are pretty cool. You can take a really low cost um, integrated circuit and you can create an amplifier for your sensor, for your load cell, for your pressure sensor. So in the future, if you're doing any kind of um, uh, research or projects where you need to amplify the voltage from a sensor, you'll use an op operational amplifier, I bet. We'll then get into digital systems. That's another electrical engineering class uh, on its own. In fact, two. And, and we'll talk about how computers make decisions, how circuits make decisions, and how microcontrollers implement software. Again, we're not gonna, my goal isn't to turn you into a uh, circuit electronics and digital system designer, but to give you enough information so you can talk to electrical engineers, lead electrical engineers um, when you're a team lead, and, and just have knowledge of what you can do with circuits and electronics. Finally, we'll connect, I'll connect the course to huh, the physical world, right? motors and sensors, the mechanical world, and um, uh, light detection, um, uh, temperature detection, things like that. And then we'll finally end with uh, some applications, uh, voltage regulation, maybe some more at the end of the course. So what you're seeing right here on this roadmap, I think will give you a good foundation for what you will encounter in the future when you work with electrical engineers on larger systems. It'll give you some of the vocabulary and background. Okay, so let's talk about our virtual classroom environment. So again, I encourage you to ask questions. We have 123 participants on this Zoom call now. Uh, it's growing, going great so far. Um, so, uh, you know, shoot me a chat and um, then I, I can ask a question, uh, I can answer your question or, or, um, or break mute. Um, please contact me if there are, are any problems, um, and I am happy to help. So any, anything you're not getting out of the class, any problem, um, getting the information from me, please let me know. So I call it the classroom in the cloud. I'm sure other people have too. Uh, we're going to use Zoom for live interaction, right, for, for this class and for labs. Uh, we're going to use Canvas. That's the source of your assignments, the schedule, and other course information. Take a look for the syllabus on Canvas. It's right there up at the top on uh, under course information. You will submit assignments um, via Canvas or instructions on Canvas. And so I'll show you that in a minute. We'll also use Slack. So you can ask questions on Slack and find answers that someone else or I have answered uh, on Slack and find out information about assignments. And also, I encourage you to take a look at Slack uh, to help others. Um, you know, th uh, think about uh, a lab partner 
like model. Now I'm going to tell you that homework, I encourage you to work with others remotely on homework. Um, and, and, and so you can contribute on, on Slack and as, as will I, and when you're working lab, right, instead of being restricted to just one or two lab partners, this is actually kind of a benefit of using Slack. You, you will have the whole classes, uh, sort of combined advice experiences of what they're seeing during lab, any problems they're having and any solutions, even beyond maybe what I saw. So, so I encourage you, you know, uh, prepare for engineering leadership and, and contribute to help others on Slack. We'll be using iClicker Reef. It's called Reef for you. It's called iClicker Cloud for me. Um, and so you'll respond to questions during lecture. I'll talk about that in a minute. And so let me know. So right now, I hope, I hope my headset is active. I'll use a headset. I should sound pretty clear. Um, if I ever sound echoey, it means my computer did something and switched over to some other microphone I have on a webcam or the computer. So, so let me know real time or, or after class if there were some audio or video problems. And let me know, especially when I get to the whiteboard, if anything's out of focus, because uh, sometimes it's hard for me to actually see what I'm presenting. We're just not there yet perfectly with uh, resources for remote teaching and meetings. Or if anything's blocking the screen, like right now I'm looking at, I think what you're seeing uh, with another computer. So if anything's blocking the screen, you can't see it, let me know. Um, so what, what to expect during lectures, we're going to do lectures via Zoom. I'm going to show you theory and example problems. I start out heavily with slides uh, because it's review and then I move into whiteboard talks to work problems, I think at the speed you will work them just to show examples and I would work them to show examples. Um, and so it's gonna be a combination of whiteboard talks and slides and clicker questions uh, that will prepare you for the homework, which is available on the course website. So take a look at that. Uh, the, the dates due are posted, all the homeworks are posted out there. So check the time due, put that on your calendar or take a look at the, um, Canvas schedule um, to keep everything consistent for everybody. Uh, what what we do, what I do is I, I don't accept late homework, but you'll see that one homework is dropped. So um, so get your homework in on time, and everybody has the same finish line threshold. So to keep it all consistent, take a look at the instructions on. So you're going to get a you're going to see a PDF file with your assignment for homework, and you're going to submit via uh, canvas. So I encourage you, I encourage you, uh, you know, you can work over Zoom with people, um, you can, or FaceTime, whatever, um, but definitely uh, get connected, work with others, uh, even if it's just on, on Slack, um, you might find some new way of thinking about a problem, or be able to help someone else, or get help from someone else. So definitely work with others, because they're are many ways to solve each of these circuit problems. So if, if you don't get help with one problem, you might see a way to work another problem uh, that you might be uh, challenged by. So in the end though, please submit your own, your own work, your own homework, your own answers. Um, so uh, please do that. And also when you're working on Slack, I'll ask this. Um, don't, don't like post the answers. Um, uh, I would appreciate it if you don't post the answers. Uh, it's really a learning experience. The purpose of homework is so that everybody gets a chance to work problem. It's a, it's a motivator. It's a it's a reason to uh, to 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 do the learning. So for uh, you know, post help, post um, uh, you know methods. Tell someone how to do. I will tell you how to do the homework problem if you stick around for office hours. I won't give you the answer, but I'll walk you through the homework problem. And, and if, you, if you choose to help uh, someone do the same, that's fine. I'm not trying to hand off the teaching responsibilities to you, but I have learned a lot from, from, my, um, from the version I use at, at, at my other job, right, engineering, uh, from discussions with other engineers on solving problems and um, through other uh, uh, venues from on the way, heck, from YouTube, right? So it's good to support others. So keep your work for studying for exams. Um, 
hang on to those homework sheets. The quizzes will emphasize, emphasize the basics. Most of the quizzes will be right up front uh, at the beginning of the semester. And it's really, those are really there to help you learn the fundamentals to make sure you're solid on those because those are required. Those fundamentals are required to move forward in the course. You'll work the quizzes individually outside of class. So what that means is um, I'm gonna have Slack channels for quizzes. Um, so it means outside of class, you shouldn't sit with someone remotely, right? Social distance. You shouldn't sit with someone and do your quiz together. You can sit with someone remotely, social distance, and do your homework um, together if you want, turn in your own answers. But quizzes, I'd like you to work on your own, but you can use Slack as a resource to ask questions. Um, and again, just like homework, to keep the playing field level and consistent for everybody, uh, late quizzes uh, won't be accepted, but one lowest grade will be dropped. The exams, uh, the dates are posted on the website, uh, those are targets. I'm going to try my best to hold those, but of course, pace changes. Um, those might might move. Generally not, they could. So if you have any travel or vacation plans, you have to be away from class. Please try to avoid those dates for exams. Okay, let's talk about the lab. That was the lecture. Let's jump into the lab. So I'm, I'm excited about the lab. This was actually fun to prepare for um, doing this remotely. So you're going to uh, construct what I consider to be practical circuits uh, that are used in electronics and these circuits emphasize topics from lecture and if you don't see how it connects to lecture I'd love to talk about that because I'm, I'm trying to make all of the lab work connect to lecture so you can see what you're studying actually work in hardware uh, the, the, the philosophy is learn by doing it's really a great way to learn electronics it's it's a really um, uh, really low investment for a high payoff uh, in, in this class with electronics hardware and lab. You're going to see the concepts from class work in hardware. And it also will prepare you for future classes that will use circuits and capture data. So you're going to be, if you're a mechanical engineering track, doing senior design, where if you have to sense anything, control anything, measure anything, um, or you know, use any kind of sensor, uh, you'll see, I hope, that that what you're going to do in this class will support that, prepare you for that. So as far as the lab equipment, right, uh, so how will this be done at home? You're, you're going to purchase uh, two kits from lab, for lab. I mentioned this in the email. Um, and so there's a device called the Analog Discovery 2. That's what this little unit up in the corner is. So I have one right here, right? It's, it's just this uh, little module that lets you implement all this test equipment that actually I have behind me here. Um, it implements just about everything and some more things that that test equipment can do. And, and you'll also buy an electronics component kit, which is a low cost. Here's some chips, transistors, and resistors. Um, the Analog Discovery 2 implements electronics test equipment that you used to have you used to have to go to the ITLL only during certain times when the bench was free, right? And and use the equipment, um, and and you know basically you had you had to go someplace. Now you will have all of the test equipment for this lab and for future classes I'll mention um, at home, which means that you can work on it whenever you want. Um, you don't have to. You won't have conflicts with your your test equipment. For scheduling. Uh, plan to use the AD2 for this class um, for, for system dynamics. So Shalom Rubin will be using this for system dynamics. Uh, senior design, as I mentioned, if you're doing your project in something that senses controls uh, or, or you have to measure anything electronically, this will be useful for that. And also uh, data analysis for acquisition. And so you're, uh, you'll actually pick up this AD2 from the mechanical engineering department. This is all being worked out right now, how we're gonna distribute it. I'm gonna send out an email about a, like a big block of time when it will be available. And um, and it'll be $200 and check or or cash. Um, and you'll get a receipt for that. And the, let's see, the, um, 
Uh, oh, this is a discount. I just found out that the new price of this is $440 from a company called Digilent. That's directly from the manufacturer. So it's a uh, deep discount. So I'll set up that block of time to pick this up and uh, we'll work through that. We've got, we've got not just this class, 100 and, about 120 people, 122 in this class, 120 people in this class, plus 180 in another class that will be uh, using these. You'll have an electronics component kit and it includes a uh, breadboard, right? Prototyping breadboard, something, something that looks like this. So you have a breadboard. You'll have jumper wires, the wires that connect circuits on a breadboard. Um, you'll also have uh, an electronics kit. So with transistors, diodes, capacitors. So here's another circuit, right? So you got transistors, diodes, capacitors on there. You're going to have a complete kit to support your designs. Um, on your in your lab, you can work collaboratively, collaboratively, with others remotely. Of course, please stay safe, um, or on your own if you you choose. But I would I would encourage you, again, jump on the Slack page and look what other people are are doing. You'll have a lab submission and a pre lab submission. Uh, the pre-lab is a PDF file. You're going to do some problems, scan it, take a photo, submit it. The lab report um, is, I'll say, not a creative writing exercise. I'm really interested in you uh, working through and troubleshooting electronics and spending your time doing that versus uh, fine-tuning the language in a report. Okay, I'm not I'm not grading on that. That will be other classes. You will get that later. But so what you'll see is you will download a word file, and that word file uh, will have placeholders, and it's your assignment, and it's also where you put your data, screen captures, photos of your circuit, uh, enter data in tables, things like that. So you fill that out, and I'm interested in your results in that template, and that's what you will submit for your lab. So each student, each one of you will submit a lab report and a pre-lab and in Microsoft Word or PDF format. If you, if you can't, you know, if that doesn't work, let me know and we'll work something out. And also it's, these labs are due as posted on the website. And so I'm not going to cut you off on like no credit for a late lab, but it's the late penalty will be 20% per day. Again, just to be fair, um, to be consistent with other students. Okay, the grading will be, here's the grading, 15% homework, 5% quizzes, 5% pre-lab, 15% lab, and then three exams. The lowest homework grade will be dropped, one quiz grade will be dropped. Um, and please use those for emergencies when you really can't get to it, like something serious, uh, because when something serious, if something serious came up, we want want to be able to use that drop provision. Okay. Okay. So I think last slide on, on course logistics. So see the canvas for the assignments and the due dates for the quizzes, homeworks, and labs. There's a PDF file out there that says something like schedule dash posted. I update that periodically, but it is one sheet of paper that gets updated periodically. Uh, that shows the, the the dates due for this class, the topics for each lecture, um, when things are due. So take a look at that. There's videos uh, for reviewing. I, I So I'm going to um, record these lectures via Zoom and so post these so that you'll have a, uh, you'll have a way to go back if you want to go back and review lectures, uh, you'll be able to do that. I try my best to do that. I haven't had a lecture crash yet on recording. It's always possible, so don't depend on it, but I'm gonna to try to make those available. There's practice problems. You'll see those, I'll talk about more, more about those as we get into the class. Uh, see the Slack page, I mentioned that already, right? Um, and I recommend, so there's some you know classic techniques that work to learn things. Take notes during whiteboard talks, I would encourage that. Um, ask questions during class, definitely stop by, see me via Zoom um, during office hours. And so I recommend that. Just, oh, that's not my last slide. Got two more just on upcoming assignments. Pre-Lab 1, take a look at that. That's due 
I think next week, but take a look at that. Uh, Lab Zero is this Friday. Lab Zero is just, you. Uh, please watch the video. It gives you an overview of the test equipment, of the types of measurements you'll be doing. Um, and you'll have a class meeting uh, with your TA just to give an intro to the lab. Quiz one is there, it's, it's due soon, and homework one is due soon, so take a look at there. So you, at those, uh, you will have right here um, these entries in Canvas. Go under assignments and you'll see quiz one. And quiz one.pdf is the quiz. And click on submit quiz one and you will enter your answers into that form. Same thing for homework. I'll have a homework PDF file. Look at that, work that out on paper. Submit your homework answers via this form. Um, the form will look something like this. So this is important. If you want, if you want credit for your quiz or your homework, um, make sure that your email address is here. So you're signed into your CU account, right, in Google. And that, put your CU student ID right here. Um, and then your answers. I, th I think all the forums should show, send me a copy of my responses by default. But if you see that, make sure you get a copy of your responses. And then if something happens and I don't have a grade for you, I'll, the first thing I'll say is, okay, just not a problem. Send me, send me uh, the confirmation for your quiz because it, it should be sent um, and we'll work it out. If you don't get a confirmation email, something's wrong. You either weren't signed in with your email address or something didn't work. And so contact me, we'll work that out. Okay, course logistics. That's all I've got. Uh, we'll start into some of the some of the real material. Does anybody have, uh, oh, go ahead. You got some questions in the ah, chat. Thank you, thank you. I have one, two, three, four, five screens open now. So literal monitor. So let's look at that. Can we purchase the electronics component kit from the ME department too? No, the, um, the electrical engineering department actually puts together these kits. So I'm going to send out information on purchasing that from the EE store. Uh, it's, it's, it's a weird class because it's a EE class taught to MEs who are buying the measurement equipment. Uh, will we be able to build the electronics equipment to tuition? Uh, no, they're going to take uh, mechanical engineering department. will take cash or or check for this. And and it's about. It's not going to be this week, right? That time slot is probably like next between next Tuesday next Thursday. So you'll be prepared for your lab. We're still working that out across classes. Um, does that mean quizzes will not be timed as long as they are submitted before? That's exactly right. If you want to work all your quizzes right now and submit them, get a lot of time. Um, where do we buy the electronics kit? I will send information on that out. That will be the double E store. And will the exams be during class or a different time? I plan to have the exams during class time. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, I'll give you more about that. How should we navigate purchasing and acquiring kits if we're in another state? Would it be possible to ship? So contact me if you are unable to get to um, campus because uh, what I've asked now is, especially if you're out of the country, it's difficult to ship from here in time. And so what I've got is one student is actually having a friend get it right now and, and ship it off. So contact me, we'll work it on a case by case basis. So please contact me if you need it like in the next 24 hours, um, if you're unable to pick this up. Is Lab Zero during Lab on Friday? Uh, yeah, so Lab Zero, take a look at the video online associated with Lab Zero before the lab and, and then join your TA at your lab time. Since quizzes are meant to be done individually, does that mean we should also do it without notes or resources? No, if, if you, so all I ask when you do your quizzes is that uh, you, you, work it, you work it by yourself. So if you wanna get on YouTube, if you wanna get on Slack, if you wanna um, uh, you know, use anything, uh, use your notes, um, talk to me about it, ask me questions, I'm, I'm happy to help. I'll give you everything but the answers. And um, 
So it, I just ask that you don't sit down, sit down remotely, socially distant with someone and work the quiz together. Okay, because the thing here's why I'm here's why I'm asking that for the quiz because the quiz is they should be really simple. Okay, it's okay if you don't find them simple. It just means let's talk. It means I I can if uh, if if I didn't teach it well enough during class, I'd love to talk to you about the concept in the quiz and I can find another way to explain it because they're really fundamental concepts that I think um, are important for the future uh, future work. Okay. Sorry for missing those questions. Again, there's kind of glitches still in this class thing, but I think I got them all there. Okay, so we have um, so 15 more minutes. What I'd like to do is actually start some material. Okay, so you should see on your screen um, circuits and circuit variables. Let's talk about um, circuits and circuits var circuit variables, but I wanna emphasize why, why this is important again. Um, so electrical circuits are part of many problems and solutions. If you're working on a product, I bet you're going to encounter electrical problems. If you're working on research, I bet you're going to run into uh, sensing and controlling some aspect of, of your, your research. Um, so I like to say this. I like to say that not having an understanding of basic electrical concepts can be as restricting as not having understanding an understanding of basic mechanical concepts like mass, like force, like velocity. Okay, so imagine this. Imagine you're working on a team and you're working with maybe developing a, 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 an autonomous drone. So you're making an autonomous drone and you're going through the specs and all of a sudden you come across like maximum velocity of the drone. And so if someone on your team starts going, well, what's, what's the equation for velocity? And you're like, no, dude, it's speed, right? I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know, you have a notion of velocity. Something moves across distance in a, per, in a certain amount of time, right? Um, and you have also have an idea of what reasonable velocities are, right? If I said your drone has to go maximum velocity five miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, you get it. If I said your drone has to go 1200 miles an hour, right? You, you'd be like that. I don't, I don't sign up for that. Right. So, um, so that's what I mean by having a feel, uh, an understanding of, of, of mass and force and velocity compared to voltage, current and power. If you have that, and many of you do, that's great. If not, I hope to instill that. I hope to give insight into that. Um, so that you would understand, yeah, 12 volts makes sense. 12 million volts, now, getting out of the room with 12 million volts. Um, so this will help you work with electrical engineers and on bigger systems and lead teams and basically help you with your career and, and make a bigger impact with, with what you want to do. Okay. So um, that's my motivational speech. We, why do we use circuits, right? It's not just for homework problems and breadboarding. We use electrical circuits to to do work. Okay, so so what's that mean? You can break, so doing work is not always obvious. Um, doing work, uh, I guess this is the obvious part, delivering energy, lighting something, heating something, uh, moving something, okay? So, so that's kind of, that's kind of, I mean, you get that, but something that's maybe not so obvious is actually representing information. In order to represent and get information from one place to another, you actually have to do work. You have to deliver energy. That's what doing work means. So if you're sensing anything, controlling anything, storing anything in memory, uh, that takes work. That takes energy. That takes power. That takes voltage. That takes current. So electrical circuits are, are doing work. Both of these cases you see on the screen are, are, are doing work. Um, and, and so uh, uh, th that's why we do it. Okay. Yes, the lab sections are, are Zoom meetings. I got a question. I caught it. Um, okay. So let's talk about electrical circuits physically, and then 
going to move to schematics. So here's an actual electrical circuit in a really old car. Um, you have a battery connected to a switch connected to the headlights and, and so the switch controls the headlights. Well, so what we do, this is just a simple example. What we do is we take that actual real circuit um, and we extract um, only the relevant electrical information, like not sizes and shapes. And we um, represent that in a schematic. So a schematic is a circuit diagram. And circuit diagram schematics consist of circuit elements. So you'll he hear me call this source and the switch and these resistors circuit elements. You'll also hear me call them components. And then conductors connect these components together. The wires are the conductors and these dots are usually connections. They don't have to be there. Sometimes they're there. Those are connections between the conductors. And you'll hear me call those nodes and connections also. So when you think schematic, think circuit diagram. And when you think um, schematic, also think that you only see the electrical characteristics. Right? And physical lengths, uh, sizes, and shapes, and placement, and orientations, vertical, horizontal, are, are not represented um, in a schematic. Typically, just the electrical characteristics. So in this class, we're going to, going to be working with uh, three values. The whole class is based on these three values, current, voltage, and power. So you are going to calculate and measure and design for what I'm going to call what we call circuit variables, current, voltage, power. What this lets you do is look at more complex concepts like sources and Thevenin equivalents and sinusoidal analysis, transistors and op amps to, to understand and be able to create and work with uh, the, the, the larger concepts that you'll get out of this course, but it's all based on current, voltage, and power. And so someone asked, what if, what if there are extremely long wires? So when you, on a schematic, you're typically going to assume that the wires are perfect conductors. We'll talk about that during Ohm's law, um, zero resistance, and, um, and their length is not represented. And, and what I would do is represent maybe a long wire with resistance with a, with a resistor. So let's talk about current. So current is the flow of positive electric charge. So what is charge? Charge is a property of matter, okay? That's not a very good explanation, is it? But just like mass is a property of matter, right? Mass describes um, the effect on something, on, a, on an object, when it's put into a gravitational field. That's one way you can think of mass, right? When, when an object is in a field, mass describes the effect on that mass. Charge is the effect on material when you place that material in an electric field, right? So it's analogous to mass. Um, it's a little theoretical, but, but it's my way of saying, you know, charge is just a property of, of matter and we're going to accept that and we're gonna call the flow of charge um, current. Current is measured in units of amps and uh, also milliamps, microamps typically. So this is a cartoon of current flow. If I have a wire represented by this cylinder that actually goes off in both directions, um, the, and you, if I do something externally to cause electrons to flow, right, negatively charged electrons to flow from right to left, positive charge flow would be left to right, right? It's opposite electron flow. It's just what we do in electrical engineering. Sometimes physicists do it differently. In electrical engineering, we consider positive current flow to be the flow of positive charge. Uh, Q of T is the variable that we use for representing charge. So this is the charge flowing through this cross section. That would be Q of T. At some point in time, this many coulombs has flow, flowed through that. And so current is actually the flow, which is just the derivative. It's the flow of charge, coulombs per second, right, or amps. So I is equal to dQ dt. You'll see this show up in the future. Okay. So um, so that's 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 an important equation uh, to note. 
and remember these slides are also posted on on canvas so you can get to these later current is always defined using a reference direction if you're def defining a flow of fluid I will talk about fluid analogies a lot in this class. You have to say which direction the fluid is flowing, left or right, or is it emptying the jug or filling the jug? Um, so current, electrical current is also defined using a reference direction. So suppose you have this wire at the bottom. I've just labeled uh, two points, A and B. And I've just said, we know that two amps is flowing from left to right, okay? Just, we know that. It is equivalent to say that we have negative two amps flowing from right to left. Two amps with a left to right arrow means the same thing as negative two amps with a right to left arrow, okay? So if you flip the arrow direction, all you do is put a negative sign in front of uh, the current specification. If I have a variable defined I1, uh, then, then uh, and I, know that there's two amps flowing through this wire in that direction, I could say I1 is two amps. If I define I2 down here, then I2 is equal to negative two amps. You match up the reference direction, you match up the variable to the, the value that you know, negative two amps. Okay, um, so we're going to use what's called the neg uh, double subscript notation. This is called a double subscript notation. You should see I, A, B there. That means this is the current flowing from A to B. So from point A to point B, that's what the A, B means. Uh, so I, A, B would be two amps. I, B, A would go in the opposite direction, right? From B to A as shown here. So that would be negative two amps. So that's the double subscript, oops, double subscript notation. All I'm showing you here is different ways to indicate current along a wire. Okay. Uh, professor, I have a question. Yes. So if you're just defining the directions as like for I subscript BA, then what decides that um, that direction is negative? Is it just like an arbitrary choice? Well, so I, I started this, let me see if this answers it and let me know if it doesn't. Uh, I started this assuming I have negative, uh, I'm sorry, I have two amps flowing in this direction. So if I were to run my mouse, it's from A to B. So if I know there are negative two amps flowing in that, I did it again. If I know there are two amps flowing from A to B, right in that direction, then IAB is a positive two amps. D did that clear, clarify it? Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, I'm assuming here that I, I know the current and then I'm relating all the rest of the values here to that current. Yeah, good question. So ask lots of questions about this because sometimes it's a little confusing about reference directions and signs and um, we'll get more into that. Let me, let me um, finish up by defining voltage. So voltage um, is a measure of energy transferred per unit charge when charge moves. Okay, that's not very understandable. It's the potential to do work, okay? Um, when you have a voltage and current flows, you are doing work, which means you're either putting energy into a system or taking it out of a system. And let me show you that. So voltage is always measured between two points and has polarity, okay? So what that means is, look at the lower left here. Uh, if I say there's a component, there's a circuit element Vx, uh, x, there's a circuit element x, and it has voltage across at Vx, which I say is equal to 12 volts. I have to give you a polarity, so I'm going to put plus at the top, I just happened to make it red here, minus at the bottom. What that means is that if I have positive charge flowing down through X, which means I have a current, I'm gonna call Ix, positive current flowing down, right? Then I had the potential to do work, 12 volts, and now I'm actually doing work because I'm, I'm I'm flowing charge through that component. So 12 volts means 12 joules per coulomb. So if I have one coulomb of charge flow through circuit element X, then 12 joules are absorbed by X. So energy is transferred. Um, let me point out, without getting into absorbed or supplied yet, we're gonna do that when we get to power. 
let me point this out that voltage does not and its polarity it does not necessarily indicate the direction of current flow you might hear current flows from positive to negative that's not true and i'll show you cases where that's not true so if i have the same uh the same voltage across component y and i do something externally to have current flow from bottom to top instead of top to bottom you still have 12 volts 12 joules per coulomb and if one coulomb of charge flows through y then 12 joules are supplied by y not absorbed we're going to get more into that supplied versus absorbed when we get to power um, but but i just wanted to point that out 12 joules of energy are transferred because you had a voltage and because you flowed current uh, through that through that circuit element you know if you if you if you take a, a weight this is a mug pens in it if you take a weight and you think of voltage analogous to height and charge analogous to the mass and i do this i've done work i've changed from one potential to another and i've taken a mass if i take zero mass and do that i've done no work or if i take a mass and i don't move it up or down i've done no work but when you move charge uh, from one potential to another you have done work okay i'll talk more about that later okay so i've gone over one minute um let me do this if you have any questions about this or anything else um what i'm going to do is uh, end right here and uh, break off for two minutes and I'd be happy to talk to you if you want to stick around for office hours so you know come back at uh, 6 13 and drop off if you don't um, so thank you for joining the live class I hope you continue to join the the live class I, I think this works out well let me know I'd like to know uh, check the assignments and schedule on canvas uh, check slack sign up for slack Ch click on the invitation um, invite that is on canvas and um, if I don't see you at office hours, I will see you next time.